Hi right, Dean, lovely to meet up with you and start doing some work on your game. Uh, just a quick recap on the main point that we covered during your session and that related to the condition of your lead wrist coming into the golf ball. Uh, we talked a lot about different things like your setup and your grip. Um, you know, at the end of the day, there are some great players who grip the club with a strong grip. Uh, you're a strong grip player, I haven't got an issue with that. Gripping the club with a strong grip actually puts the, the left wrist in a slightly, uh, or gives it a slightly cupped appearance at setup. And that sometimes can be problematic because if we're trying to hit a draw, uh, we need that lead wrist to be more bold coming into the golf ball. So we've either got to put that ball in there or, or sort of uh, put it in there early or try and put it in there during the downswing. If we didn't and we had that little bit of cupping in the lead wrist um, with a strong grip, we'd be more suited to hitting a little fade. But we want to hit a draw, so that's not a problem. We can do it. It's just we need to appreciate what that lead wrist is doing and what it needs to do. So at the start of the session, we can see that the condition of your lead wrist is a little bit too flexed. And as per the images that I'm going to send across to you and that I posted on Facebook earlier, uh, we saw a number of players who had lead wrist conditions that were sort of very much underneath, knuckles down. As per Dustin Johnson, we saw uh, Robert Rock, Grant Way, who was slightly less knuckled down, but was still knuckled down. We had Mike Bennett on there, who was more sort of, I suppose you'd call it flat. It was ever so slightly sort of knuckled down. Uh, but certainly didn't see any top players with this sort of cut lead wrist at P6. So we wanted to work on improving that. Now, do we need it like Dustin Johnson? Not necessarily. Do we need a little bit of that in there 100%? So we can get this lead wrist and move it like we see with Mike Bennett's or Grant Waits. The ability to get the sweet spot in behind the hands will improve and the ability for you to open up the body through the hip will improve. At the moment your lead wrist is suggesting that the club would be well out in front of the hands and the only reason it isn't is because you tend to keep the chest facing the camera uh, a little bit too long, don't really open up as much as you could, you tend to get quite square with the shoulders, square with the hips at impact etc etc. Uh, and that can lead to just, you know, other areas or other problems. Uh, and you can relate that to some of your inconsistencies that you've experienced of late. So what we're doing here is we're really putting that sort of, that risk condition that we're looking at. We're just putting it in as a drill at the start of the swing. Just get it all in there, knuckles down, uh, bowing out the left wrist, relate to it however you like. And in this instance, I've asked you to max it out. I'm then going to want you to, just turn that back, sorry. I'm going to want you to hold that position. So the way you practice this is very important. Max it out. Hold it. Get familiar with it. Once you hold it for a little while, you can really put your attention on how that sort of, how that area there feels, that left wrist bowed out, knuckles down, etc., etc. So really maxing it out, getting it in there. The more you do it, the more familiarity you get, the easier it then becomes to carry out at speed. Once you've held it, what you then do is just take the club back and execute the shot. And the goal is to try and keep that wrist condition in there for as long as you can. Okay, so if we take both swings up to the top now. can see that at P4, the lead wrist is now flatter than it was previously. As we transition, we can start to see that the lead wrist is a little bit less flexed. You see a little bit more of the knuckles at this point on the right than it was previously.
and at P6, we start to see a marked difference in the condition of the lead wrist compared to where it was. So that position that you put in the early in the piece is being maintained for longer. You can see here again that wrist much more flexed. Much more cut, should I say, than it was previously. Which, as the wrist becomes more bold at P6, the body can start to open up a little bit more aggressively through the shot. The exit can lower, and you're already starting to see here the tailbone is starting to release a little bit earlier. And we're starting to see a little bit more gap between the knees, which is a sign the body's opening up. But the main thing is to focus on improving that lead wrist condition so that you can happily open up through the shot without the fear of the golf club getting moved outside the line and cutting across the golf ball. Good luck with it. If you've got any questions, feel free to give us a call uh, or drop us a text. Look forward to seeing you in a few weeks' time. Well done.